In this video, I'm going to show you the scapular dyskinesis test according to McClure. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Although evidence is conflicting, alterations in resting scapular position and dynamic scapular motion have frequently been described in various shoulder pathologies. However, Byrne et al. in the year 2016 observed a prevalence of scapular dyskinesis of 33% in asymptomatic non-overhead athletes and 61 in overhead athletes. So it is fair to ask the question if scapular dyskinesis is not rather a functional adaption in athletes. But are we able to identify the patients with scapular dyskinesis in the first place? McClure et al. in the year 2009 have evaluated their method of determining scapular dyskinesis in young overhead athletes and have found a kappa value for the inter-radar reliability ranging from 0.48 to 0.61. For this reason, this method has a moderate to substantial reliability and this method has a moderate clinical value. To observe for scapular dyskinesis according to the method of McClure, Give your patients two dumbbells of 1.4 kilograms or 3 pounds. If they weigh uh, less than 68.1 kilograms or 150 pounds and 2.3 kilograms or 5 pounds for patients who weigh 68.1 kilograms or 150 pounds or more. These weights are used due to a study done by Johnson et al. in 2001 that showed that active movement with resistance resulted in abnormal scapular motion more often in those with shoulder injury. While the examiner views them from the back, have them perform five repetitions of bilateral flexion followed by five repetitions of bilateral abduction in the frontal plane with straight elbows. Both shoulders are in thumbs up position and shoulder elevation and lowering should be done to a 3 second count. Scapular dyskinesis is present if either winging or dysrhythmia is present. Winging was defined as posterior displacement of the medial border and or the inferior angle of the scapula away from the thorax. Dysrhythmia was defined as premature, so before 60 degrees of humerothoracic elevation or excessive elevation or protraction, non-smooth or stuttering motion during arm elevation or lowering or rapid downward rotation during arm lowering. Both sides are rated independently as normal, subtle or obvious dyskinesis. Under subtle, the authors understood mild or questionable evidence of abnormality not consistently present. Under obvious, they understood striking clearly apparent abnormality evident on at least three out of five trials and meant dysrhythmias or winging of one centimeter or greater displacement of the scapula away from the thorax. Finally, they rated the combination of flexion and abduction test movements together. Then normal was defined as both test motions rated as normal or one motion rated as normal and the other as having subtle abnormality. Subtle abnormality meant that both flexion and abduction were rated as having subtle abnormalities. And obvious meant that either flexion or abduction or both were rated as obviously abnormal. Alright, this was our video on the scapular dyskinesis test by McClure et al. If you want to learn more about the 4-tap classification of scapular dyskinesis by Kipler, click on the video right next to me. As always, we hope that this video was helpful to you and you leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. If you want to get our whole work in a great overview on your laptop or your mobile phone, check out our links to the newly published ebook and our mobile app in the description down below. Thanks a lot for watching. This was Kai for PhysioTutors. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.